Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 14, and this is what it says. It happened that when he went into the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees on the Sabbath to eat bread, they were watching him closely. And there in front of him was a man suffering from edema. And Jesus responded and said to the lawyers and Pharisees, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. And he took hold of him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which one of you will have a son or an ox fall into a well and will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could offer no reply to this. Now he began telling them a parable to the invited guests. When he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table, saying to them, Whenever you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And the one who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person, and then in disgrace you will proceed to occupy the last place. But whenever you are invited, go and take the last place, so that when the one who has invited you comes, he will say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will have honor in the sight of all who are in the dining at the table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, he also went on to say to the one who had invited him, whenever you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or your relatives, nor wealthy neighbors. Otherwise, they may also invite you to a meal and return, and that will be your repayment. But whenever you give a banquet, invite people who are poor, who have disabilities, who are limping, and people who are blind, and you will be blessed since they do not have the means to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, it's a day, it may be a day of praise, a day of gratitude, a day where we turn to you to seek your face. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, sometimes it's funny what you remember over the years. Many years ago when I was associate pastor here, one of the people I remember very fondly was Mary Cherry. Mary and her husband Sam that would often stop by the church just to see what needed to be done. And uh, I remember one day, Mary had great stories she came in one day just to see if she could help out with anything. And she had a group of folks around her. She was sharing a story. She said she and Sam were pulled up to a red light. They were second in line at the red light. And Sam let his, his foot fall off the brake pedal. And they, they drifted into the car in front and, and barely hit the bumper of the, the car in front of them. She said the driver got out and began shouting at Sam through the window of the the car. Sam didn't get out of the car, and the man just kept shouting, called him everything but a child of God. (laughs) And then Mary said she looked and noticed on the man's bumper there was one of those Christian fish 
that was right there on his bumper. And so she leaned across her husband, Sam, through the window and said, excuse me, excuse me, I know you're talking and I hate to interrupt, but I've seen that fish before. What does that fish on your car mean? <laughs> I said, well, what happened? She, she said, well, he quit talking, he got in his car, ran the red light and just kept on going. <laughs> Sometimes the right word at the right time is priceless. Sometimes the right word at the right time is priceless. Here this morning, Jesus gives us the right word at the right time. The time, well, we read it. It's a dinner. It's a dinner at the house of one of the leaders of the Jews. And it was the Sabbath day. Now, when it says that it was the house of one of the leaders, the word leader right there says that he was on the Sanhedrin. Well, that might not mean much to you and me, but that's not just a leader of his neighborhood or a leader of his community or a leader in the, his synagogue. If you were on the Sanhedrin, you were one of the 120 people that were judges for all of Judaism in the whole world. This was no small leader. This was a, a great leader. This was one of those folks that when they walked through town, people would, would point and say, he's on the Sanhedrin. He's one of the 120 that are there to adjudicate Judaism. He didn't just know the Ten Commandments. He knew that when the commandment says, keep the Sabbath day holy, that the natural question went, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that you don't work. Now, make sure and put that rule in there under the Sabbath day holy. Well, what is work? That's the next question. Well, work is when you carry anything heavier than a fig. And so, write that down, write that down. That's one of the, the, one of the rules that you put down under keep the Sabbath day holy. Well, that's work if your work is carrying things. What if you're a tailor and your work is is using a needle and thread. That weighs a lot less than a fig does. So is it work if a tailor carries a needle, even though it's lighter than a fig? Well, yes, that is work for a tailor. So write that down. So that would be one of the rules under that keep the Sabbath day holy. Well, what if the tailor has the needle stuck into his robe where he puts it when he's not using it right then and, and he doesn't know it. What if it's the Sabbath day and a tailor has a needle in his robe? It's less than a, weighs less than a fig, but is that work? Well, yes, that's work. But, but make sure and put that down. There were 270 rules that went along with that one law. Keep the Sabbath day holy. And he knew all 270 of them as did everyone on the Sanhedrin. They were the leaders of the leaders. They knew exactly what it meant to keep the Sabbath day holy. And when they invited Jesus to the dinner, the one thing we know about Jesus is he never turned down a dinner. <laughs> yes, over and over again we saw he, he ate with the sinners and the tax gatherers, but here he's eating with the leader of all the leaders. And the second thing we know about Jesus is he never turned down an opportunity to heal, to bring wholeness. When Jesus sat down at this dinner, across from him, it tells us there was a man with edema. He was swelling, swelling all over his joints, all over his body. It said he was suffering from edema is what it says right here. Well, it says that Jesus took hold of him. He reached his hand out to heal him. And he asked those who were there, those who know, knew the law the best, he said, is it lawful or not? Well, they were the ones that were steeped in the law better than anyone, and nobody said a word. Jesus reached out, he healed the man, and he, he sent him on his way, sent him home. And that's when Jesus goes on to say, he says, which one of you? If you have a, a son or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, that you don't immediately go to that son. Nothing's more valuable than a child. What, which one of you doesn't go down into the well on the Sabbath day? 
Which one of you doesn't risk your own neck to go into the well to, to get the most valuable of all? A child. Well, of course you do. What about an ox? An ox isn't as valuable as a child. And you go into a well to get an ox, you, woo, you're in danger. There are 14 verses in the Old Testament that talks about what to do when your ox gores someone. You, chances are pretty good. You go into a well to get an ox, you're going to get gored, you're going to get it stepped on, you're going to get broken. But who doesn't hesitate to do that? Not as valuable as the sun, but still you go in there. Well, Jesus isn't talking about children and animals right here. He's talking about risk. Risk. Risk to, to go into the well. Risk to reach out the hand. Risk that, that makes a difference. That this is an invitation to risk. Well, still they don't get it. So Jesus gives the right word for the right time. He tells them a parable. A parable about a a dinner. It's a wedding dinner. And he says, imagine that you walk in, you look around, and you know, you're thinking, who could be more important than I am? I mean, after all, I've known the bride since she was a little girl. Our, our kids played together. She came over to birthday parties in our house. We came over to birthday parties in their house. We've known her that. Kids, have a seat. We'll sit, family, just have a seat. We'll sit here at the table because we're obviously one of the honored guests. And then the father of the bride comes up and says, You remember Uncle Charlie and Aunt Martha? Charlene is named after Uncle Charlie. I, and you're sitting in his seat. You don't mind, do you? Yeah, I'm sure there's another, another uh, table down there for you. It's, it, it's the kids' table. Yeah, you, you know where the kids' table is. It's around the corner behind the wall in that other room. And you go back there, and kids are ah, they're playing with their food, and they're slurping up jello as fast as they can, and there you are. Well, everybody kind of giggles when you make your way back to the kids' table. And Jesus says, when you go to a wedding, start off at the kids' table. Go back there where they're playing with their food and slurping up jello. And then when the, the host says, come on up here to the, the head table, then you'll receive honor. The only thing is, fat chance. <laughs> fat chance that's going to happen. That you're going to be at the kids' table and be invited up to the front. Yeah. It's not about seating order at the table. It's about risk. It's about risk. It's about sticking the neck out. It's about going to that place where you don't know that you're going to be honored. You don't know that you'll be recognized. You don't know that anything extraordinary will be happened will happen to, to go in your direction. This is a story, not about seating order, it's about risk. It's about risk. Jesus' greatest condemnation is for those who take no risk at all. Think about it. His greatest condemnation throughout all of the Gospels, well, in the parable of the talent, it's for, not for the servant who, who had five talents or the one that had three bags of gold or the one that had one bag of gold and invested. It's for the, the servant who had the one bag of gold and buried it, the one who did nothing. Jesus calls that servant in the story wicked and evil. When Jesus cursed the fig tree, it's because it produced no fruit. It wasn't that it produced bad fruit, it produced no fruit. The story of the Good Samaritan. Who receives the worst condemnation in the whole story? Well, it's the priest and the Levite. They're, they're fine people, but they pass by on the other side. They did nothing. The story of the rich man and Lazarus. It wasn't that the rich man was, was mean to Lazarus, so it, he, when he died, he went to Hades. No, he did nothing. 
And Jesus tells us at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, a story that in the end, when the sheep are separated from the goats, that those who were the goats, it wasn't because they went out and they did, that those people did evil things, it's because they did nothing when they saw him hungry. They did nothing when they saw him thirsty. They did nothing when they saw him naked or imprisoned. That Jesus' greatest condemnation comes for those who play it safe and do nothing. And do nothing. That what Jesus is talking about here is a risky love. A risky love that that goes into the well. A risky love that extends the hand. A risky love that that doesn't puff itself up. A risky love that reaches out, not when it's safe, but especially when it's not. And that's the kind of love that Jesus had for you and for me. Romans 5 eight says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That Jesus didn't wait till we were good as we could be or better than we had been. It was while we were yet sinners, while we were still a long way off, that's when he gave his life for you and for me. Not because it pleased him, it's because it's what you and I needed. A life, a life free from the burden of sin, shame, guilt and fear and he rose from the dead because it's what you and I needed the power of his Holy Spirit alive here today living through you and and through me it's a risky love a risky love that he has for you and for me and that's what Jesus is inviting us to a love that sticks its neck out, a love that extends the hand, a love that, well, it goes into the well. It goes into the well. Max Lucado in his book, The Angels Were Silent, he writes, the young husband is packing his wife's belongings. His task is solemn, his heart is heavy. He never dreamed she would die so young. But the cancer came so quickly, so, so quickly, At the bottom of the drawer, he finds a box, a negligee, unworn, still wrapped in paper. She was always waiting for a special occasion. He says to himself, always waiting. As the boy on the bicycle watches the students taunt, he turns inside. That's his little brother they're laughing at. He knows he should step in and stand up for his brother, but those are his friends doing the teasing. What will they think? And because it matters what they think, he turns and pedals away. As the husband looks in the jewelry case, he rationalizes, sure, she would want the watch, but it's too expensive. She's a practical woman, and she'll understand. I'll just get the bracelet today. I'll buy the watch someday. Someday. Someday, the enemy of risky love is a snake whose tongue has mastered the talk of deception. Someday, he hisses. Someday I can take her on that cruise. Someday I'll have time to call and chat. Someday the children will understand why I was so busy. But you know as well as I do. Someday never comes. We like to think, you know, you give what you get, but that's not what always happens. But you give anyway. We like to think, well, you know, you reap what you sow, but sometimes you don't, but you sow anyway. Not because of what you and I will receive. It's because of who we are. And who gave his life for you and for me. His name is Jesus, 
And as many as received him, the Bible tells us, to them he gave power to become children of God. Power. Power to stick our neck out. Power to get into the well. Power for risky love. Power to go to the effort. Power to invest the time. Power to write the letter. Power to make the apology. Power to take the trip to purchase the gift to risk. This morning, it may be that this this pandemic This pandemic that we're getting to the other side of, that it's it's caused you to be fearful and to hide, to not reach out, to not notice, to be silent. Jesus has more for you and for me than that. What he has for you and for me is life. A life, a life that's lived through the power of the risen Christ that gives us strength to go to the effort, gives us the strength and the power to to risk. Not just when you, you get what you give, but even when you don't. Power to go to the effort, to not just reap what you sow, but to sow anyway. This morning it may be that your desire is to have that power in your life. It comes through the risen Christ when he makes his home in your heart. And I want to pray with you now. Let's pray. Jesus, it's your power that brings life It's a power that comes when we receive that what you did on the cross, it's enough to forgive us and free us. Without knowing your forgiveness, we're a people who are trapped. Trapped. In a room of of unforgiveness. A room without hope. A room where we, we try our best and still we fail. Lord, grant power enough to receive that gift and not just hang on to it for ourselves, but power enough to risk, to reach out, to go into the, into the well with your strength and your power to, to risk love. Not just when we know we'll get it back, but even when the chances are good that we won't. Lord, with your power, help us love anyway. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, And we're a compassionate church. We believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us.
is an hour. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.